up in the modern day has been a radical experience. The vast overstimulation alongside the window into every disgusting crevice of every world issue that the internet has given us has exposed us to life's big questions at an early age. What is society's purpose? Why are we here? What is edging? Is God real? How do I ungoogle edging? Help, I need help. We're gonna look at absolutely every facet of life compared to generations prior and discover why Gen Z is so sad and what you, you can do to fix it. I want you to stop edging. There's a monkey. Chester Stone. Uh, first, we're gonna start with the physiological needs. Now, here is where the problem sort of starts. The physiological or bodily needs of the average Gen Z are met without much struggle, if not oversaturated. Of course, there are places in the world where people can't get food, but your average person not only has access to food, they have access to food that is so rich and satiating that like previously only like kings with gout would be allowed to eat it, you know? Like if you went back in time and you gave an old English peasant a Twinkie, he would, he would die of diabetes on the spot, but that's available to you every single day if you want. We're gonna talk a lot in this video about the needs of Gen Z's not being met, but the foundation of our lives is that our most basic needs are like over met. Like one of the words on physiological needs is, 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 is reproduction. The amount that people are masturbating these days, physiologically, the average person's body thinks it is housing Drake. My body thinks I am such a player. I am told there was once a time people had to work hard to orgasm. If your life is like mine, you you have had to work hard not to. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and talk too much about overstimulation and porn and these things because I, I feel like they've been over talked about already. I will say that the fact that all of our bodily needs are met without very much struggle at all produces the first layer of like existential irony and agony for Gen Z's because the very next rung on the ladder of the hierarchy of needs are safety needs and mentally speaking I don't think the average young person like feels safe the average person is more safe of course there are places where there are wars and we're gonna get into talking about that completely but like like Vikings used to be a problem. You used to like live on a coastal town and just mind your own beeswax and all of a sudden you're getting pillaged, man. We don't have to worry about pillaging, but every single day you open your phone and you like watch pillaging. You open your phone and you watch all these videos of war, people talking about climate change, the world is ending, Iran, nukes. Your body sort of feels like it's very unsafe at all times, even though once again, pillaging is a thing of the past for the average person. But a lot of these safety concerns are very legitimate. Employment is dog shit. If you can find the job, you probably don't have the luxury of it being a thing that you actually want to do with your life long term. There was a time in history where you could pay like 40 bucks a month for rent and then you spend two days a week bagging groceries and the rest of your time, I don't know, doing acid and f***ing people in the park. The thought of ever owning a house is essentially off the table for any young person. Maybe one day by the age of 60, I'll be able to afford a couple months in an apartment in Manhattan where I could live a, a bohemian life like it's the 1960s for one half day a week. You know, take my Fridays off to do some ecstasy. You probably have a job that you hate and then a hustle you do on the side to help you feel self-actualized. More on that later. But you know, a house, food, Shelter, water, these are I, these are material things, okay? You know, the Beatles said, y you can't buy me love. And, and with Gen Z, what we as a generation lack in safety, we make up for in love, belonging, and community. Right? <laughs> no, I'm fucking around, we're all lonely. Love and belonging as a Gen Z, this one is rough, man. Here's what your life is. You probably have realistically like five or six friends from high school that you consider your best friends because you survived the mission of growing up with them, but you realistically don't talk to them enough, and when you do, you talk to them over the phone. You don't even FaceTime, because that feels kind of gay. You have work friends, but they're work friends. You know, you smoked weed with them once, and that's as close as your relationship got. And if you are lucky enough to have a significant other that you're actually in a, a committed, loving relationship to, which for a lot of reasons, including the economy, people feel less and less inclined to do. If you are lucky enough, 
to have that special someone that you love. You probably don't have, as other generations have had, a, a, a network or community of other couples that you can like do stuff with. In previous generations, you heard people say things like, oh, one day our kids are gonna play Little League together. I'm gonna be honest, my kids are gonna be lucky if they have friends to play League of Legends together with because I'm not. No one has time for community because they spend all of their time working and once they're done working, they're exhausted and they don't wanna fucking talk to people. They wanna go on their phones. They wanna watch the new season of Invincible. And this is where the space for things like political extreme radicalization this all gets looped in you spend all day on your phone watching a sensationalized version of society which is already pretty crazy on its own and that just drives you insane and so you find a community of people with the same crazy algorithm that you have and then you all get mad about it together and boom your community problem is solved in previous generations you would have had friends that you just like did boxcar racing with meanwhile you're in a discord group called uh, uh, edging to the unibox this brings us on to self-esteem, which is where we really begin to embrace the darkness of the Zoomerdom. Part of the issue of trying to have self-esteem as a Gen Z is the constant hypocrisy that you're forced to be involved in and aware of. Because of social media and the fact that all of the world's knowledge is at your fingertips, you are completely aware of the fact that your life is founded on an unfair system of violence. If not for the fact that your tax dollars are supporting imperialist wars, you could become upset by the fact that your clothes and your phone are made by slaves, or that the food that you eat comes from factory farms. It's stressful to be doing all these things that you're constantly being told are completely immoral, but you don't know how to stop yourself. And so instead of carrying on every single day in a state of existential crisis, you take shelter of motivational gurus on, on, on social media who tell you that everything is fine as long as you be mindful and you focus on yourself in the moment and you just keep mewing. You go to the gym, you keep mewing and you, and you get that bag, girl. You go get, you get that, you just be a girl boss. To me, living deeply means becoming so involved in even the most mundane of activities that you barely even have time to think if you feel lonely or not. It means growing out of the instant gratification that makes the awe-inspiring world we find ourselves in boring. Oh, get really involved in this thing called life by participating in Oh yeah, really observing it. Well, I love watching videos like this because basically what he's saying is you see, you open your phone every day and you see videos of people dying Bro, just focus on mewing. That's what's important, really. I don't want to be too much of a hater. This guy's trying to have a positive message. And it sounds nice. Embrace the mundane. But it's legitimately not a, a philosophical response to the fact that your life is devoid of actual meaning. Uh, on top of the fact that it's founded on a system of unfair suffering towards yourself and others. Like, I think the reason that the average young person has a really nihilistic attitude, especially towards motivational videos like this one, is because... Focusing on going to the gym, improving yourself, being present, these are legitimately not enough to solve our existential crisis. It's not enough. I mean, A, it's not possible to be present enough that you never have an existential crisis. You're always gonna loop back to that thought eventually, no matter how well you distract yourself. And B, just because you become so focused on yourself that you don't feel the things in your existential crisis, it doesn't mean it's not true, it just means you've become very good at ignoring them. Which brings us to the final point, self-actualization. It really is one of the hardest times to be self-actualized. Baby boomers grew up with spiritual hope, acid trips, and political change. And when the acid eventually turned into heroin in the 70s and Watergate happened, although they realized that the 1960s wasn't gonna produce the grand society founded on spiritual enlightenment the that they answers, wanted man. to happen, they were able to turn their backs on that decade and embrace materialism during a period of economic boom. They all became rich. And so Gen X were raised in cynicism. And although a disaffected attitude grew from the lack of, uh, of spiritual or religious direction in life, the even greater economic boom of the 1980s to the 2000s, combined with the global fall of communism, allowed them to cover their lack of fulfillment with wealth. But then the dot-com bubble burst, Iraq happened, the housing market crashed, and millennials' fates were just sealed. Disaffected by traditional organized religion, disorganized spirituality, economic instability, they were condemned to lives of complaining on the internet about their simultaneous lack of fulfillment and wealth. And that leaves Gen Z in a really awkward position because 
nothing has changed. There are still apparent widespread issues with organized religion and disorganized spirituality. The economy is only getting less stable. And here's the kicker. Here's the real bad part. All the complaining has already been done. We can't even get the satisfaction of being the first to say it. I just want to, I want, I want to be the first guy to say boomers suck, but we've already been saying it for 10 years. If I sat here and told you the church sucks, hippies are dumb, it's hard finding a job, you'd be like, yeah man, 2007 called, it wants its gripes back. You gonna let them burn your gripes like that? Come on, baby. Okay, Mr. Negative, you say? You're gonna sit around talking about how hard it is to be a young guy, like, complaining about other people's uh, advice for how to live a better life. What's your advice on the secret to the mystery of happiness? Oh, wise one, you say. I'll tell you my solution to the mystery of happiness. I don't have one. At least. At least not in this video. If you're a Gen Z and you're having an existential crisis, uh, good. That means you're a sane person because this place is fucking crazy. Get used to it. That doesn't make you weird. That's how you're supposed to be. You already know this, but it bears repeating. Don't just blindly listen to everybody who says, want to solve your existential crisis? Try this. I'm going to give you the eternal answer to that question. Want to solve your existential crisis? Think about it a lot. Be sincere about finding an answer. Ask around about it. Read a lot of books. And then once you do find an answer, start having an existential crisis about the five questions you have about your answer. It was never easy to exist, and it definitely isn't now. The issue is that because of social media, we watch people every single day who are really good at putting on a face like they're happy or they're rich or they're enlightened, when in reality, none of those things are true with most of the people that we actually watch. And even if you are watching someone who is very rich and famous and happy, that doesn't mean they're actually like fulfilled, you know? I know I've been very cynical, but wait for it. I'm working myself up to the motivational outro. Just watch. Put, put your hand here. Put your hand here. I'm going to hold it, okay? Hey, you're probably not going to be okay. The world probably isn't going to be okay. Statistically speaking, wait for it. I'm going to get there. Calm down. Give me your hand. Calm down. We're going to get through this together. You're going to have to fucking live with that. There's never been a time where that's not true. Even in times where things were going really good, all of those people all died anyway. Wait for it, it's gonna get comforting. Just wait for it. Because of your phone, because of social media, because of the internet, you live at a time where you are forced to confront really violent, vile images on a daily basis. And those images are presented to you right next to images of people who are fabulously wealthy, more wealthy than people have ever been before, and they're flaunting their supposedly great lives in front of you. And that's a really difficult thing to be confronted with every day. But the fact that you live at a time where you are forced to confront these issues on a daily basis is a good thing because it gives you the opportunity to more diligently think and pursue ideas like living with integrity, sustainability, and spiritual growth. That's all true. Or, or, you could spend all day edging and gooning. The choice is yours. The choice, you could edge all day. The choice is yours.